Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of my binder junk journal series. Um, we worked on the cover in the first video, made the collage, worked on the spine and thank you so much for all your support and views and comments. I just really, really appreciate it. Today, we're gonna to be working on the inside of the cover, but before we do that, I want to do one little step on, on the front of the cover and kind of tell you what the goal for today is. So I am just taking some gilding wax and going around the edges of this photo album binder because number one, I think it just will give it a nice little finished little touch, but also I think it will kind of elevate the cover um, make it look more cohesive and less like a photo album binder. So I'm just taking a little bit of water to activate my gilding wax and I'm just going around and sort of gilding the edges. So thinking about the inside and what we're going to do today, I really want to make sure that I keep the cohesiveness of the cover, the colors, the papers, and the atlas feel. One of the ways I do this is by creating a tray it's curated with all the things that I used in ses session one. I organize it so that I can simply clean up at the end of the day, put it aside, and then bring it back for the next session. And all of the papers, the washi tapes, and the things that I've chosen are ready for me to use. So this beautiful old antique map, originally I thought I was going to line the binder with this map. But then I thought that metal piece might get in the way, and I, I just wasn't feeling it. And I thought, you know what I'd love to do? I would love to mimic the feel of a um, pin board. You know, the kind people put on their wall when they travel the world, they put a pin in it where they've gone and they, they label where they've, they've, they've traveled. How cool would it be if I pinned each piece of mail that I've received from around the world? I love that idea. So what I need to do then is make sure that this map is glued together to make a hole. So I have this gorgeous piece of ledger from the 1850s and I thought that would really be pretty on the back. And I'm trying really hard not to make old things precious. I, I think this would be really beautiful, but something just isn't sitting right with me. And I think what's not sitting right with me is the fact that I really want to record where things came from and I would have to cover that ledger paper in order to do so. And then I don't want to do that because it is a really beautiful piece of paper and it's old and the writing's great. So I take out my postmaster ledger again and decide these pages are pretty cool and they would work because they have plenty of lines and space for writing. Of course, I'm not be going to be writing about stamps or post office boxes like what the ledger is about, but it gives me plenty of lines to put in locations and maybe dates and names. So I think this will work great. And I will be giving you a freebie of some of the pages from this ledger throughout the series. Um, I'm going to try to have a freebie for every single video, so uh, look in the description box below and I'll have um, little pop-up links that come up so you'll see whether or not that's the freebie for this particular video. I haven't decided at this very second. I haven't finished editing this video or finishing the freebie, but it will be there by the time this airs. So I'm now lining the map with this paper in the back. It's the paper's from the 1930s, so it's significantly old and has a great patina, but it's still strong and flexible. It's not going to crack, which I really, really like. Sometimes that's hard when you use old paper. It sometimes doesn't have the structural and integrity that you would like for a project. So I, I know I can see that the inside, the middle part, is not covered, but I have an idea for that. I, in my mind, I'm pretty much thinking that inside middle area will be a gutter, and um, we'll deal with that in a moment. So I'm just going to take my scissors, and I'm going to try to trim the edge as straight as I can without taking out any of the map. I want to be able to merge the map and have the locations match up. Um, so I'm not I'm not caring so much about it being straight. I'm caring more about not cutting off a city or a town that needs to go from one side to the other. And I also know it's going to be very hard to glue this without losing information because if I pull the left side over the right, I might lose a little bit of the map. 
So you just saw my head stick in there. What I decided to do was put a blank piece of white paper in the back and then really just, I'm going to put a lot of glue stick and just line up the edges and sort of massage that glue across and hope it's going to bond enough to the paper on the back to really be supportive. So you're going to see me kind of rubbing in the glue. Um, I'll end up putting, I think, a little bit of art glitter glue on one of the seams and kind of rubbing that in as well. What I'm essentially trying to do is get the glue to sort of go into that little tiny seam between the two maps um, and also adhere to that white piece of paper on the back to give it support. It's not going to look 100% perfect, but I'm okay with that because it'll look a little old and tattered and I'm putting a little bit of uh, that ledger washi tape on the top just to support the seam. Because the washi tape has that ledger vintage style, it's just going to make the map look a little old and tatty, which I really kind of love. So now I'm, uh, I've turned it over and I'm going to cut away the edges of the map. I'm just using, you know, a craft knife on a, on the back of my, you know, work, work mat, and I'm just trimming it down. And then the next thing I'm going to do, which might be a little bit weird, but is I'm going to rip the white paper away, but not where it has adhered to the seam. It's almost like making a little band-aid behind that glued seam. seam. It, it's going to support it and it's going to give it a little bit of extra oomph, but I really didn't want that white paper to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put some pretty paper on top of that white paper. So you won't even know the white paper's there, but yet it will support that that old seam that I've just reinforced. So now I'm just trimming away the edges, um, cleaning up the map, trying to make it straight, and and I have my left side and my right side, and then my gutter that now needs to be prettied up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm ready to work on that gutter, and I'm going to take out my uh, papers that I was working with yesterday. Some of them have already been ripped and cut, and some of them are fresh, and I'm going to try to use some of the digital kit papers, the Atlas papers, to bring in that cohesiveness of the cover and the look of the journal. So I've measured the center of the gutter from, in other words, from the edges of the left-hand side to the right-hand side ledger papers, and it's about four inches, and I'm now going to cut four-inch strips from two of like this was really one of my favorite graphics in the kit is this blue and yellow. Like I'm guessing it was probably from a wallpaper. I just love the colors and I love the graphic details. And I think that that will make for a really neutral, um, that piece, that gutter in between, but yet at the same time, um, really bring it together with the junk journal feel. So I'm just kind of lining up the design and I'm going to put, the glue stick on and just just make the gutter look pretty you know just just put those pretty junk journal papers or design papers you could use scrapbook paper you could use wallpaper um, whatever it is I just want the left and the right are all so linear I want to have something more floral or more decorative in the center and even though it's busy when you have a repeating pattern like this, it doesn't feel busy. It feels, um, I don't know, it just sort of to me works and it feels very pleasant and calm to me. And then what I'll do is I'll take a few choice pieces of ephemera from the kit and just sort of decorate that gutter. I don't want the gutter to get ultra busy because again, I want to keep it calm and keep in mind, I'm going to be filling the left and the right hand pages with writing. So I just want a few little pieces of ephemera that my eye can land on that bring the whole project together and just sort of gives it another element or another creative, you know, layer. So this is where you really see how I combine digitals with found papers. I had that 
geography book that I scanned those little globes and I made the globe the size, I wanna say it's probably a two inch circle. So I'm just punching out the globes because I'm taking now found papers, the ledgers, the digitals, and then the globes, along with a few of the little labels from the ephemera kit, and I'm merging them together into a repeated cohesive project. You know, if you don't use digitals, that might be scrapbook paper. Scrapbook paper might be the replacement for the digitals. They may be a repeated pattern that you're using with some book pages and old an old, you know, ephemera. Perhaps it's wallpaper, vintage wallpaper. I just think there needs to be an element that gets repeated enough that it just brings everything together. And again, I want this to look pretty. I want it to look old. The globes bring in the whole map thing, um, but it's, it's going to have plenty of room for me to write. And I really, really love that. So now you're going to see me trim it really right down to the frame because when I did my final measurements, in order for the map to fit in a pocket within the journal, I'm gonna to need to, ch to trim it on the frame, but luckily it will exactly fit the dimensions of the book inside the pocket, so I'm really happy about that. Okay, so then the next step is I'm going to ink the edges of the map so that it's nicely defined and kind of blends in um, with the washi tape and, you know, just kind of gives it that neat old look and then I'm going to take a step back and try to decide um, where I need to go from here. I think the only thing left is I'd really like some kind of a clear line between the the gutter collage area and the ledger paper. I don't know why I just feel like it needs this like really neat and tidy boundary or trim. So I'm going to take two pieces of washi. One of them is sort of like a yellowy gold, uh, has like a mailing, mailing details on it, like, like cancellation stamps and things like that on it. And the other one is like a deep navy blue and has a really kind of like graphic vintage look to it. And since blue and yellow are two colors that are in the digital kit, I think they play off of that centerpiece well. And I don't know, I just really like the idea of these really clean lines on the inside of the map. Okay, so now I need to fold this map. And I don't want to fold it on that repaired line because that will make it way too weak. So I'm thinking I need to fold it in three equal parts, which of course probably needs some measuring because I want to do this right. But I also am very interested in making sure I fold it in the ledger somewhere that makes sense, right? I don't want to fold it like so that the middle section has some weird fold in it. and So I'm really trying to think about where I want the folds. And I'm using my metal ruler to help guide, the, make the fold nice and clean. And um, in the end, I really think the, ch the places I chose to fold make sense and it looks good and it's going to fit in a pocket well and I I'm happy with that. So now which side of the cover will it go in? Um, on the right you can see it will fit but barely. The left hand side is a lot more generous for space so I think the left hand side with a pocket is the decision that I'm going to go with. So I'm going to start picking some papers and try to figure out how I am going to decorate the inside of this binder. And obviously I want to use some of Sharon's papers and I'm trying to decide how am I gonna approach this? And here's my thought process. The map is kind of busy and when the map is in the pocket, I don't want it to look too busy. But yet when the map is out of the pocket, I still want it to look pretty. So what I need to do is find a paper that is somewhat simple, but also, you know, will look pretty on its own. I'm considering this folded bird as the pocket outside and thinking that I can use some paper behind it that will offset the bird. So now I'm, I'm 
I'm trying to pull somewhat, somewhat plain papers, papers that will look really pretty when the map is not in the pocket. And I really like this one with the blue forget-me-nots and the tape and the bird. But if I use the bird, then the bird pocket will be just too many birds and they won't line up. So I'm looking again at the forget-me-nots and I say, this is it. I like that. I'll have something going in a horizontal direction, design-wise. And then I like that even though there's a lot going on in the back paper, you have forget-me-nots and a bird and script, it's plain enough that it's not going to look crazy against the map. And if the map isn't in the pocket, it's just going to look really pretty. And I just test that theory out. And yep, you don't see the bird. You just see a little bit of text poking out and it looks simple from the back. So it gives me the look I want with the map in. And now I'm thinking about the middle, like the spine area. And then of course I have to think about what goes on the other side of that ring binder. And I decide since the left is so busy, let's go super neutral and plain on the right. So I take out my music paper. I think music paper is like, it's sort of like it solves every problem. It gives, it's got an interesting like background design. Musical notes always look great. They sort of mimic script, but there's no words to contend with or else it doesn't need to necessarily have words. It's very graphic. Usually old music has great patina. And then I notice in Sharon's kit, she has a page that has music paper that's the same color as mine. And it has a patchwork of colors and labels. And now I'm really drawn to the transition between the left, which will have a lot going on, to the right, which will be very, very simple and clean. And as I mentioned to you before, I am not a symmetrical, centered, matchy-match person. I like things that are a little off-center. I like things that the focus isn't right in the middle. I like colors to be cohesive, but I, I don't like things to be always matchy-match, which hopefully doesn't bother those out watching that are in the OCD world. And funny enough, I have my own OCD things. I think we all do. Um, but being centered is not one of them for me. So I cut the strip for the spine and I'm sliding it under that metal bar. And that glue is going to grab on there and it just really looks, it looks like it's just going right underneath the bar and going to the right hand side, which I love. I used my uh, craft knife, I think you could saw it, see, to just kind of make sure that all parts of the paper were secure underneath the metal piece. And now I'm using plenty of glue um, and I'm starting from one side and slowly working my fingers to the other, massaging and spreading out the glue underneath to make sure it's smooth, it's not going to bleed through, and it's going to have a really great hold on the spine. And I think that it really blends well with the music paper on the right and the graphic pieces I'm going to put on the left. And now I just need to put another little graphic kind of patchwork piece on the bottom of the page there to make sure that makes sense. And then the final little step will be making sure that that teeny tiny area uh, at the at the right above the metal binder and right below the metal binder gets filled in so that it looks like a seamless piece that just went right underneath the metal binder and out the other side. And um, luckily, the music paper blends perfectly with the kit. Like, I couldn't have even planned that any better. And now I'll finish gluing down all the other pieces and parts. It's interesting because I usually make videos where I just talk as I go and I don't do voiceovers. But because of the nature of this series and how many hours it will take to make these books, I, I want to make them as succinct as possible. And by going through the voiceover process, one of the things I realize is how many individual choices we make as junk journalers throughout a process. We choose 
papers, we choose items. Right now you're gonna see me choose an envelope that that bird piece will go over because I wanna make an envelope that um, the map will go into and I'm trying to find one that I'm gonna cover with that kit. And it's just so interesting when I go back over and I'm doing voiceover work on these videos, I realize, you know, everything is a decision. Washi tape is a decision. Inking is a decision. The paper we choose is a decision. And we junk journalers, we make a lot of decisions. In fact, now you'll see me make the decision to add a piece of vintage upholstery ribbon to the top of my envelope. I make this decision because I want that additional texture I love the pattern, but it also will help the envelope stand up to the map going in and out. And I'm going to throw some stitches on the trim part as well. But I can't throw those stitches in until that glue drives on the textile. So that's just going to sit there drying while I now trim down the music paper on the right hand side. You know, when you break down the dozens and dozens of little decisions that are made in a project like this, I think it is helpful to see how other people, why people make choices and how they go about their projects because that's how we learn. We all have different thought processes on how we approach things and I think we learn from each other. So if I can explain why I'm choosing one paper over another or why I'm deciding to put something in one location over the other, that may resonate with you and hopefully give you some ideas when you are facing your own decision making. I learned so much by watching other people's videos when I started out and really my goal is not that I know everything because I certainly don't know anything, but maybe just the way my brain thinks um, will add an idea to your toolbox because I certainly still get inspired by everybody that that I watch in the paper community and, and by you and your, and your ideas. So now you see I'm just making these little tiny like repairs like little tiny patches that will go right above the metal piece so that that transition looks super smooth going from the left side to the right side. And uh, I'm just going to cut them out and I'm going to glue them in. Okay, so that glue is dry, so I can now put it through my sewing machine. And as you can see, I put some stitching between the top trim and the bottom. And now it's just going to be a matter of me gluing that piece to the envelope and then gluing the envelope to the binder. Again, my Fabri-Tac really needs to be thinned with some acetone. It's goopy and oh, is there anything better than a fresh bottle of Fabri-Tac when it just comes out so smooth and easy? I swear that just doesn't last long. Maybe I'm just really not good about putting the cover on after every single use but man sometimes it can be a struggle and I'm going to put plenty of glue um, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to trim those edges that's what you're seeing me fuss about because this is what I mean about we can be very non-OCD about one thing and then very OCD about another and now I'm just going to finish gluing the front you know the front uh digital piece to the front of the envelope and I'm using uh, plenty of art glitter glue. So now this envelope will be stuck onto the binder and it will provide the perfect place um, for the map to reside. I'm going to trim off the bottom little overhang there. Sometimes I fold it just to make a clean edge but there just really isn't enough there to fold so I'm, I'm just going to trim it back. And now I'm going to throw a little ink on the edges just to give that envelope definition. And I think for now, that's good. And then that will be stuck on right there. As you can see, there's going to be plenty of room on that left-hand side for the map and then for the spine to fold easily. So speaking decisions, when I'm looking at this project, I know I need to put something on the right there. But I don't know if that decision should be made now. Sometimes it's easier to make decisions about 
big areas once we know how we're going to use it. So I'm going to put this away for a few seconds, maybe an hour, maybe till tomorrow, and then I'll decide where I go from there. So here I am the next day. Sometimes when I have like a blank slate, and not that this is a blank slate, but I know that I want to do so much more with this. Um, sometimes the best way of knowing what to do is to step back from it and um, just sort of come back with fresh eyes. So coming back with fresh eyes, I knew that I want something here on the spine and I want something here and I want to embellish this. I also know that this map isn't 100% done either. So what I did is whenever I'm looking at, when I'm working on my junk journals and there's a theme and I want to start taking those secondary layers, I, I take inspiration from the things I own. I go through my fussy cuts, I go through my labels, I go through my charms, and I start pulling little elements that can start inspiring new ideas. So let me show you some of the things I found. I have some Denison -like labels. Specifically, airmail ones are, to me, go so well with this theme, and I love the colors. And then I have these vintage gummed labels, which, you know, are going to look amazing on this project. I have um, a coin, like, display, you know, when you buy coins, they put them in here. I don't even know what it's called. I guess a coin holder. Um, it has a little window. I found some blank labels. I have a, um, like a file folder, you know, like a little index card separator, but I love the blue and I pulled the A for Atlas. And what else did I find? I found an envelope um, that has a nice blue st stamp on it. It's from the 50s, and inside I put things that I thought also would go well. I have some more vintage labels from mail. I have some more labels. I have this um, garment tag that is like vellum that I might work with. And some of my favorite labels are from Tracy Fox, um, her random label sets, which I will link below. So... Um, I have those and then I have all these little charms I've pulled and I may add to this dish but I always find it's easy to pull things with colors and items that I may use that will help you know uh, inspire me so I have like words like cherish and travel and journey and explore and adventure even though I'm not traveling or adventuring I feel like it is an adventure where all these items come from. I have beads and little trinkets that are all in the same color palette. And I even have a dog tag um, from my dogs um, that have my hometown, which I thought might be fun at some point to incorporate. And then I found these little coin envelopes and I thought these would be the perfect size right here to you know, have a tag or some other little detail, and they fit the dimension really, really well. So I think I'm going to alter these, and I was thinking it might be really fun to have a flip, which then kind of takes this journal that I'm making, and even though it is a junk journal, and it's a binder junk journal, it'll have elements of a lap book in the cover. So I really like that a lot. So um, let's get started on, on that right now. I don't think I want the flap. I think I'm going to fold the flap in. I'll moisten it a little bit and fold it in. And I think I'm just gonna put a thumbnail, a thumb hole there. Back to the voiceover. At least the voiceover, I, I like doing that with regular speaking because it allows me to speed up the film and then you don't have to watch me folding envelopes inside themselves in real time. 
So now I'm going to try, you know, you saw me take the coin envelopes and I folded the flap in because I'm not, I don't want them to be like envelopes. I just want them to be like little pockets. And what I'm looking for is some kind of paper that I can cover the outside of the envelopes with that will make sense in this design. I also realize from trying on a bunch of little papers that if I use something busy on these little coin envelopes, it's going to distract from the layout that I just put so much thought into making. You know, the pocket with the blue forget-me-nots and the bird. I don't want all of a sudden for my eye to go crazy because I'm adding more bold elements to it, right? I, I don't want to compete with this design that I just chose to make. So I decided to go with some very plain papers that will sort of just blend into the eye when it's sitting in the spine. They're very similar in color. They they stand out. You can tell they're covered. You can tell there's a pocket there, but it's not standing out in a way that competes with anything. And even though I believe I did a really good job of picking two very simple papers that are not going to compete with the design, once I am finished making these little pockets and I stand back and look at it, I am not happy with the top one. I think it is too busy and I think it does compete a little bit too much. And I didn't really realize that until I made the second pocket because when I put this little second pocket down and it is so plain and I realize how much my eye takes relief in that plain detail, that's when the top one just looks too busy for me and I decide, I'm going to make a new one with a new paper. And it's okay, I can use this pocket somewhere else, but I'm going to ditch it and I'm going to make a new one. So here I am, I'm going to be blending my found papers with my um, kits. So I decided to use one of my ledger papers from my Postmaster book and I scanned it um, because I wanted to give it as a gift to you. I like this piece because it has this like check, cool check piece that's like, um, attached on top of it. So I'm going to actually just use my scan because, well, I can. And I really like just isolating a few of the simple lines from it and the numbers, and I'm going to glue it on the front. I think earlier in the video, I wasn't sure what my freebie to you was going to be. And, um, now I knew, do know, as you just saw, it's going to be um, a page or a couple pages from my ledger and the link will be below and embedded within this video. So I'm going to fold that flap back in and recover this envelope uh, just like I did the first time with the kit. So now I have my two plain envelopes and I really love how they blend because now I want to do add a couple of layers of some of those embellishments that I showed you earlier that I had um, like washi tape and um, little tiny doodads that really just give texture and interest to the project and I hope that doesn't confuse you that I'm now adding something to make these plain envelopes more interesting after I just made sure they were super plain but I think what I'm trying to say is sometimes something is graphically pleasing because the design of the graphics are bold enough, like in Sharon's kit, and sometimes something is visually appealing because you're adding little elements to it. And I like having both in my projects because it adds texture and interest. I hope that makes sense. And now I'm just going to put thumb, thumb holes in the envelopes so, so that you can tell that they're pockets and something can be um, slipped inside. And then I'm just going to take Fabri-Tac and make sure that they are glued well into the spine. And making sure that they're like lined up on the spine where I, I want them to be is half the challenge. So now our envelopes are in place, they have the washi tape, and I just think it would look really great to put a few vintage postage stamps on these little um, pockets in the spine. I love working with stamps and all kinds of collage, but it really truly is appropriate to be picking out some stamps for this Happy Mail binder, right? I mean, there's a nod to postage throughout the theme of the design here. And I think that 
postage stamps just they're just little like little works of art now you may notice that i just chose the airmail denison label for the top envelope and only put postage stamps in the bottom envelope i like the clean look of that design um, i like choosing stamps for one pocket and a label for another pocket uh, and that little burst of color from the denison label i think is like a little pop for your eye to travel to and see but yet the design is still very clean and it's very um simple as is the stamps below it's just an it adds a nice little vintage layer without going too crazy and because i forgot to ink my edges i have to just sort of slide a paper right up against um, that envelope and ink it that way just a little hack if you there's always a way to do something if you make a mistake or you forget a step okay and I'm gonna get my globe uh, scan kit the globe piece that I made and bring that back into the party again I've reduced it on my printer I think to 70% to make like a one inch circle and I'm gonna pop that out and put it in that coin holder just to make another cool little I don't know embellishment or cool little piece um, for my my junk journal I have the new the two sides punched out and I will glue them back to back make sure the right side up and I'll take my inker ink the edges just so that the globe is um, better defined and then I'm going to take um, the little coin holder and I need to make it a little bit more interesting than just a plain white holder. So I'm gonna just take my blue ink pad and you're gonna see me just sort of touch around um, a little bit, kind of blend in a little smudges here and there. I'm using the blue kind of here and there and then I'm going to edge with my normal like vintage photo and you know I'm just trying to make a little bit of marks here and there I'm not a hundred percent like thrilled with the way it looks though but I'll get back to that after I'm gonna glue this shut now and I'm going to put a clamp there um, just so that it can really hold in glue and truth be told I used art glitter glue it didn't hold that well I ended up having to put a layer of Fabri-Tac so why that is while that is drying and holding because I, I need that to hold I had this little idea about the map remember those labels I found well I put them in my my vintage typewriter and I typed little expressions or sentiments in them that had to do with mail I thought adding that to the map and to the pocket that the map goes into would be really cute. The one that I'm going to put on the pocket says, to send a letter is a good way to go somewhere without moving anything but your heart by Phyllis Thoreau. I thought that was a really cute quote and I thought it really looked like a sweet little element to put on the outside of the map holder. And then there was a stain on my map, and I thought it would be really cute to put the second little sentiment I found, which is, More Than Kisses, Letters Mingle Souls by John Dunn. And I just thought that was such a cute little sentiment, sentiment and went so well with Happy Mail. But it just seems kind of like it's floating in the ocean all by itself. So I put a little blue random label that I had from my random labels um, kit that Tracy Fox made and the two of them together I think make a lot more sense and it's going to get filled up by hopefully little plot lines of where the mail comes from but now that that's in the pocket and I have that cute little quote that's going to go on the outside of the pocket I'm pretty happy with that I am trying to still figure out though what the outside of the pocket is going to look like and I don't know if this little globe piece is going to be part of it so I just figure I will continue to work on this little globe window so I punch out a piece of just white scrap paper so that I can put it over the window and then I can ink a stamp I have that's script writing and I can stamp the 
the, the coin holder without stamping on top of the glass window. So basically that little punch out I just made is a mask. I'm making a mask for the window so it doesn't, you know, so that it doesn't get dirty. And I really like how that text in um, the vintage photo, or no, I think that might be the corduroy. I think that's brushed corduroy, that, that color. I really like how that looks on the tag. And I think that, that this little holder just needs like a hole in it now. And as much as if you've watched me, you know, my, I am not a fan of the crocodile and I want to use my punch set here, but honestly, it's too thick. It's two coatings of cardboard and too thick. I end up having to get my crocodile to make the hole. So, okay, I'm not going to be a hater. I'll use my crocodile when I have to. And then I'm going to set that hole with a, um, like a vintage, a blue colored vintage eyelet and that'll it's just going to make a cute little element what am I going to do with it I'm not sure but I had this idea and I wanted to work it through so now I'm thinking maybe it'll go on the outside of the pocket but it eh, I'm not feeling it it just it does doesn't seem right but I do have this little metal piece that says journey on it and I, I really like how that looks and I decide that between the quote and then the little metal sentiment, I think that's going to make a really nice design. So I get a, a little piece of lace. It's not old lace. It's just Hobby Lobby lace. And I cut a little length and I fray up the edges. Now that that decision has been made, I can put that down and I can glue down the quote that I typed um, on my vintage typewriter. I'm just going to put that a little on an angle and then I'll take out my Fabri-Tac glue and glue down the lace and then glue down the metal, metal sentiment on top of the lace. And I think that's gonna look perfect. I'm really happy with that design. It's simple and clean and the elements in the kit shine through, the sewing, everything just kind of comes together in that true junk journal style. Okay, so now I have this little globe piece and I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Uh, it's cool, but I have to now look at what's left here. Let's look at this. Let's look at the overall look of this piece. Um, I start looking at the the pieces I can put on the right, start trying them on a little bit, floating some ideas. And then I realize, you know what? I haven't even started with the journal part yet. I don't know how I'm gonna wanna use the back cover. So I think it's time for me to say it's done, or at least it's done it to this point and anything that can be added can be added at the end of the project once I know a little bit more. So that is the inside cover. I think it came out pretty good. I'm happy about where it's at. Yes, there will be some additional um, details added, but I think it's in good shape. The only thing I still want to add is this uh, cute little label I typed up that says like far away friends and I thought it would look really cute on the map and I'm not really sure where it should go on the map but I I think that the last detail for today's session should be that being included on the map and I decide the outside really isn't right because there's just too many labels on the front and I'm going to put it inside where I'm gonna actually write the names of my faraway friends. So as I take care of the last detail of video two, I wanna thank you for joining me. I want to invite you to go to my Buy Me A Coffee page to download any freebies that I offer throughout this process. Today I'll be offering you some um, ledger pages from my post office book. Unfortunately, the pages are bigger than my scanner, but I'll be able to scan enough that it'll be usable for your project, and I think you'll really enjoy those papers. So as I decide that I am going to glue this little faraway friends and the top corner of my um, map and fold it and tuck it back away, I want to thank you for all the support, all of the comments, and I hope you will tune in with me again because the next video will be the first page of our actually junk journal part of this book. And I can't get, I cannot wait to get started on that. I love you guys. I love 
hearing what you're doing with your projects. I thank you for being a part of this little process. Um, and, do, you know, we're, we're figuring it out as we go along. Who knows where we'll end up by the end of this month. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.